Hello. My name is Lakeisha Lawrence. I'm the Dropout Prevention Coordinator in Orangeburg County School District, and I am so excited that you decided to join me for this session. So let's talk about it. That's the name of our session. So the session is really about healthy communication with yourself and with others. And yes, I do mean having a conversation or having communication with yourself. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So let me give you an overview as to what you're going, you're going to be um, learning about in this session. What is communication? Why is healthy communication important? The types of communication and how to communicate with yourself, how to communicate with others. And then at the end, I'm gonna wrap it up and then if you have any questions, then I'll give you more information as to how you can ask those questions. So let's get started. So what is communication? Now, I don't want to insult your intelligence because I know that we all know how to communicate. But just to formally introduce before we actually start talking about the different types of communication. So let's define what communication is. Communication is simply the act of transferring information from one place to another. It is more than just exchanging information. It involves emotion and intentions. So let's keep that in mind. It involves emotion and intention, even if it's the written word, even if it's nonverbal. And we're going to talk about those types of different, those different types of communication but they all involve emotion and intention. So why is healthy communication important? Well, it promotes healthy relationships, it conveys clear messages, and it fosters confidence, trust, respect, positivity, and security. Now we all want healthy relationships and communication is a big part of that. And having cl clear messages, sometimes, the way that we communicate with others may not be received the way that we intended. And so being clear and making sure that you are giving off what you expect others to receive through your words or through nonverbal communication as well. It fosters confidence and trust and respect, positivity and security. All of those things are important not just in our communication, but just in everyday life. It doesn't matter whether it's in your family, whether it's at your job, whether it's with your friends, all of those things are very important. And so let's move on so that we can find out a little more. So I have a trivia question for you. How do humans communicate differently from animals? Now, of course, animals cannot talk, unless we're talking about parrots. Okay, but anyway, so I'll give you a minute to think about it. How do you think humans communicate differently from animals? Do, 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 do. I know, uh, okay, that was silly. All right, give up. Well, humans have a formal spoken and written language. So that means we have developed a language that we write. Um, our language, we have different languages that we learn as humans. It just depends culturally where we are in the world. Animals don't do that. Biologically, they pretty much have the same language for whatever their species is. And so that makes us unique. So we have a way of conveying something that a common animal cannot. Makes us kind of special, huh? So let's talk about some different types of communication. We have written communication. And when you look at written communication, you're looking at things like emails or memos or postings on social media. You know, a long time ago, the common thing used to be writing letters and mailing them. Wouldn't it be nice to receive something in the mail? I know a few days ago, I actually found, well, my sister found a letter um, that was written to my grandfather and it was dated like 
1960, 1946, I'm sorry, 1946. And I'm like, wow, it had the stamp and everything. It was from New York to Orangeburg. And so that was just a nice keepsake, just to be able to see um, my the handwriting from one of my uncles, my aunts, who's writing to my grandfather. So written communication is very important. Another type of communication is verbal communication. I am communicating with you verbally and also non-verbally as well. Now, those two pretty much can go hand in hand. Now, if you're verbal, um, unless you're like talking on the phone and no one can see you, um, that can be verbal communication. But when you are speaking face to face with someone, your nonverbal communication is just as important as the verbal. Um, sometimes you don't even have to be verbally communicating. Your nonverbal communication can convey. I'll give an example. Uh, how many of you have had your parents, like your mother or your father, um, or whoever your guardian was, to give you the look? You know, you knew exactly what that look meant. And so you knew to stop what it was that you were doing or to do something that you were supposed to do. But that nonverbal communication was powerful. I know my parents, they can, my mom can still look at me and I'll do exactly what she wants me to do. And so that nonverbal communication can be anything. It could be hand gestures. It could be facial expressions. It could be looking, your eyes. It could be your body language, like your posture. All of those are types of nonverbal communication. Listening. Did you think that listening was a part of communication? Now, let me distinguish the difference between hearing and listening. Two totally different things. You can hear something, but when you listen, you process the information that you're receiving so that you can respond or react to whatever it is that you're receiving. When you hear something, it doesn't matter. Like a few minutes ago, they were cutting the grass outside. I heard that, but there was nothing for me to do with that. With that. And so know the difference between hearing and listening. I know sometimes people would come into my office and the vent in my office it makes this annoying sound. I've just become immune to it. So people, they would come in my office and say, how do you deal with that all day long? I don't even pay any attention to it. They're hearing it, but they're not actively listening to get something from that. Okay, so there's a difference. And so we're going to talk about active listening. When you actively listen to someone, we are not listening more so to respond. Sometimes people just need an ear. When you listen, you show that you're listening. So your body language, nonverbal communication, your body language will show. So you may lean forward attentively. You may keep your eyes on the person that you're talking to. You may nod in agreement or <laughs> shake your head no, as if you're not agreeing with what they're saying. But all of that is saying that you're processing and taking in the words that they're saying or what they're, um, how they're communicating to you. And so we want to make sure that we're actively listening, not for the sake of having a rebuttal, not for the state sake of having a response, but being able to process. So how do you actively listen? Well, you may respond to the person by saying, so you're saying what you mean is. And so you just paraphrase what they have said so that you can have clarity on whatever it was that was shared. So that's just, just a little tidbit on what listening really is. And then you have visual. So because we live in a media, multimedia centered um, environment now, then visual cues are they're just a part of our daily lives. And so when you are on social media, 
think about Instagram. Instagram is an example of just having images to convey a message. Um, on commercials, you know, you see visual communication all the time. Sometimes there aren't e even any words that are spoken, but that visual will give you the message that they're trying to share. Okay. Now, self-talk. Now, I really am kind of talking to myself, even though I'm talking to you, because there's nobody else in this room but me. But of course, you'll be listening for a reason um, and participating in this session once you're on the receiving end. But self-talk is something that I do. I really do. My husband often tells me that there, if there's nobody else in the room, that I would talk to the wall. I didn't think that was funny. But anyway, so what is self-talk? Self-talk is your inner dialogue influenced by your subconscious mind. So you're really having a conversation with yourself in your mind. It reveals your thoughts, your beliefs, your questions, your ideas. It could be positive, negative, or instructional. Now, we would hope that your, your self-talk would be positive. That's saying things like, I'd say to myself, good job, Keisha. You did that. Pat on your back. Hats off to you, girl. Negative would be, oh my gosh, I am never going to be good at this. And so we don't want to dwell on the negative. We want to accentuate the positive. So we would take those negative thoughts. And even if I were to say, oh, this isn't working out the way I'm expecting it to, but I'm going to keep trying until I conquer it, until I get it done. So you're taking that negative and change, changing it into a positive. And then you have instructional. So it's like you're kind of walking your step, walking yourself through the steps on how to accomplish something or how to do a task. And so that's what I was doing when I was setting up and making sure I had everything right for this session. And they would say, OK, so I have this. I have this. All right, let's get started. That was my self-talk, walking through the instructional process. How to communicate effectively with others. But well, once you have mastered communicating with yourself, then communicating with others is really important. So as we talked about just a few minutes ago, really listening, you intentionally listen to the person. Like I said, sometimes people just need you to hear them. They need you to hear what they're saying, not really for a response, but to take in what they say, because sometimes they're just talking so that they can hear themselves to process as well. So be intentional about listening and then check your tone and your body language, because how you say things. I'm sure you probably have had a parent or someone, an adult to tell you or, or have told a child um, it's not what you say, but how you say it. So that's important. So your tone and your body language. I'll give you an example. I could be talking to someone and I say, I love you. I love you. Would that be convincing? I mean, would you really, really think that I love you? Nah. But if I were to change my tone, change my body language, and I would say, I love you. I love you. Then that would be different. And so a little more convincing, a little more believable. So check your tone and your body language. Also be open and honest. Communication is a give and take. You're not always going to be the one that's understood. Um, sometimes you have to agree to disagree. And that's okay because we're human. We're not going to get along all the time. We're not going to agree with each other all the time, but respect what you have to say to each other. And so it's a give and take. So make sure that you're open and honest. Don't say what you don't mean. That is basically in a nutshell, just a small um, a snippet of communication, just a brief overview. So if you have any questions about this session, then feel free to contact me and my contact information is on the next slide. 
If you want to host a session that's more interactive and have then then the session that has you know details and um, activities involved, then contact your principal and we'll create that session to fit your needs. If you're interested in another topic, then visit our website, ocsdsc.org, or you can contact Dr. Liana Calloway or Mr. Hayward John if there's a session that you might be interested in that we haven't created yet. So once again, my name is Lakeisha Lawrence. I'm the Dropout Prevention Coordinator. You can reach me at my email at lakeisha.lawrence at ocsdsc.org or at 803-533-7964. Now, before I end officially, we would like to get feedback from you because it's important. And so I want you to take your phone, turn your camera on, and I want you to scan the QR code. And then a survey, an evaluation will come up with just a few questions to give you um, a chance to share with us your feedback. And so I thank you in advance and I hope you join us for all of our other sessions that we have for you. Have a great day.